Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Stones River, located in Rutherford County, Tennessee, on December 31st, 1862 through January 2nd, 1863. Union Command had ordered U.S. Major General William S. Rosecrans to move his army, the Cumberland, towards Murfreesboro. The goal was to push Confederate Army Tennessee out of the state. This force was commanded by Confederate General Braxton Bragg, and Bragg wouldn't be pushed out, not even at the suggestion of the Confederate President Jefferson Davis. Instead, Bragg moved his men to both sides of Stones River as he prepared for Rosencrantz's attack. Most of his defensive positions were in flat terrain with no defensive fortifications. It is unknown why, but Bragg did not have his left and right flank dig in. Unlike other Confederate troops earlier in this series, he didn't take advantage of being on the defense. After showing some impatience, Bragg decided on December 30th that he was tired of waiting. So on December 31st, the majority of the Confederate army shifted to its right flank. This caught the Union off guard, who they themselves were going to attack that same day on the right flank. And they had already dispatched U.S. Generals Thomas L. Crittenden and George H. Thomas in their attack. In this incident, though, the Confederate forces had moved first and hit the Union lines, disrupting and pinning down Union General Philip H. Sheridan and his men. Overcoming initial shock, though, Sheridan's men saved the Union from a quick defeat by putting up a harsh resistance and stopping the Confederate drive from cutting off the supply lines. Eventually, though, Union troops had to pull back. Rosencrantz acted quickly and called off the rest of his attack and attempted to set up additional defensive placements. Eventually, the Union forces rallied and laid down their own rifle and artillery fire that slowed and then eventually stopped the Confederate forward movement. The heaviest fighting was happening in a place called the Round Forest, the closest defensive position towards the center of the Union lines. The Confederates assaulted a natural defensive position many times, with no success and heavy losses. These losses included some regiments losing half their officers and more than 65% of their men. Bragg frustratedly called for more troops from his reserves, ordering Confederate General John C. Breckinridge to cross on his right flank. Unfortunately, this put the Confederate attackers right in front of a very effective Union defense. In addition, the area was so tight that the whole force couldn't move as one. Instead, they had to be fed piecemeal by brigade into the fire. Eventually, the Confederate forces broke and retreated. The battle quieted down until January 2, 1863, when Confederate Commander Bragg ordered an attack against a small Union sortie led by U.S. Colonel Samuel Beatty of Crittenden's 3rd Division. The two forces approached each other in battle lines, and at 3.30 p.m., the Confederate side began the assault with an artillery attack. When the Confederates reached the Union lines, they were butchered by Union rifle and artillery fire. The Confederates didn't hesitate and continued marching up the hill and pushed the Union forces back. They could only hold the area for a short time, though, as Union reinforcements pounded both flanks. Eventually, after an hour and 20 minutes of fighting, the entire Confederate assault pulled back. General Bragg at this time received information that Union General Rosencrantz had received more reinforcements. So that evening, in the dark and drenching rain, at 11 p.m., General Bragg and his troops retreated out of the area. The losses were steep. The Union had lost 12,906 men, including 1,677 killed, 7,543 wounded, and 3,686 captured or missing. The Confederates did not fare much better, with 11,739 men lost. This included 1,294 killed, 7,945 wounded, and 2,500 missing or captured. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.